this is where I'll hand it off to Chris and we talk about the top monthly short-term administration questions and I'll jump into the short-term advanced applications. Well, as uh, Travis mentioned, I'm Chris uh, Mitchell. I'm the Director of Operations for Inflow. So as I was kind of looking at, you know, over the last couple of months what topics we covered and looking at, you know, the different topics we should cover this month, one of the ones I kept getting a lot of requests for was for external forwarding. You know, we get a lot of uh, customers that say, well, how do I, after hours, if a customer wants to be able to press a digit two maybe and get transferred to a, a you know, an engineer's cell phone or a, maybe for a medical facility on an on-call location or something like that. So we always tell customers, well, yeah, we can definitely do that. We use route points to complete that. If you're looking at route points in the system, it, it does explain, you know, to you what, what you can use the route point for. So some of the stuff we can use route points for is integration with third-party systems. So a lot of time if you have a, a call center solution or a call recording solution that we're integrating with, we'll use a route point to kind of pass data between the short health system and, and the third party system. But in this case, we're going to use a route point to forward calls out to an answering service or, you know, to some other destination. So we can use a user can transfer a call to this. We can also have a user's voicemail, you know, say if you need assistance, press zero and they could actually transfer to a route point, which forwards out to an answering service or something. The most common use is an auto attendant, you know, press a digit and auto attendant. Instead of telling them if you need customer service, please call this phone number to say, if you need press customer service, press two and two will forward it out to a, you know, a third party customer service solution or something that, that a customer contracts with. And then sometimes we just need a customer says, well, we don't actually do this service anymore, but we still have this phone number. We've sold this service or somebody else handles the service for us. Can we take this phone number, just route it out of our system? So yeah, we say, okay, let's build a route point and put a DID on it. And we'll just route the call as it comes in our system. And then we just automatically forward it back out of the system so that we don't have to deal with that call. Nobody from you know, your team is required to answer a call just to transfer the call out so we can kind of automate that process. So how do we do that? So the first thing is we log into Shoreware Director. We expand our call control, and you'll see route points down at the bottom, or in the middle, really, of the, of the call control option. So we go ahead and select the, the route points option. On the right side of the screen, you're going to get any route points you already have configured in the system. But at the top, you'll see that it says route points, add new, just so you see on that screenshot in the, in the bottom of that page there. You simply click the add new button. All right, so when we hit add new, it's going to give us a, a, an edit route point page. This is where we're going to kind of give it a name. Whatever you give it this name is what is going to be displayed in the directory on the, on the phone and also the directory in your communicator software for when everybody's looking up different stuff. So we want to give it a name. We need to pick an extension number for it. It can be really any extension you want. It's just the extension we transfer calls to so that they get forward out of the system. The DID range, you can see I don't have the DID range checked, but if I simply check that, if somebody were to call a DID, I can auto-forward it out to this answering service route point that I'm building. Uh, as you go down, the user group where it says staff right there, the only important thing to worry about on the user group was we need to give this route point a user group who has access to forward calls. So sometimes we want to forward the calls to a long-distance phone number. We just need to make sure the user group that we're using has permission to forward long-distance calls. Or in some case, we have one customer who does international. So we then make sure the user group has international rights. By default, your route point server should just be your main voicemail server. Unless you're doing integration with some third party, then we would set that server to your, you know, a different server for integration purposes. But for this purposes of, of forwarding calls out, we just want to assign it to the voicemail server. We can uncheck all of the mailbox server options because obviously we don't need to take messages or anything on this extension. There's one other important feature in the bottom that says call stack depth. What this is, is this tells the system how many concurrent calls should we allow to hit this route point and forward out. It only needs, you know, from when we transfer a call to extension 1844, it's going to connect, you know, an outbound call. It's only using this route point for, you know, usually up to 30 seconds, just depending on how long it takes to connect that call and that other party to answer. Once the other party answers, the route point is out of the mix. So we just need to know in a 30 second window, really, how many concurrent calls do we want to allow? I usually recommend 10 or 20, depending on what your call volume is going to be. The second half of the configuration is the bottom half of the route point configuration. And this is where we have some different options. We can actually apply a schedule to this. So during your on hours, if somebody transfers to this extension, we can forward it to one phone number. In after hours or holiday, we could actually forward it to a different number if we needed to. So in this case, I just want to create a route point. Anytime I transfer a call, it's just going to forward to this 888 number. So in my schedule, I put it to none, which means always use the on hours, 
365. So then I put in the external phone number in there. You do see you do need to put the nine or if you use an eight for, for your for your outside digit plus, you know, to make it international, you know, compatible. And then you put the phone number in afterwards. I just made up an eight hundred number. I don't think that's an active number. It probably is, but not one that we use. So yeah, I put that in there and then I simply hit the save button on the top of the page. Once I save that, I'm able to simply dial the extension eighteen forty four and it would route my call out the eight 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 hundred one two three four. So Pretty simple to build. We have a, a number of our customers that are using this feature. It's you know very easy to use. There's no licensing required to do this, which is nice. We can build as many route points as we need. We do have a limitation of route points per server at 254. Well, that's really easy. If we need more than that, we simply spin up a secondary short tail voicemail server, and I can build 254 more ports on the next server. So not a you know, not a big deal. You know, really, we we have unlimited capability here as needed.